Hello. I just wanted to recapture something that every single person who's been working from home this year has definitely seen more than once, and it's this. Oh, is it my turn to present? Great. How do I share my slides on this thing? Oh, um, it says that I can't share slides. Can you give me permission to share slides? Great. OK. So and then I click this. Uh, oh, uh, sorry, you weren't supposed to see that. Here's my presentation. Um, my name's Steve Cross and in this video about how to improve your online presentation skills put together for the University of Cambridge, we are going to be looking at slides and media. How to make sure that you don't do that. You're not the person who doesn't know how everything works at the beginning of the meeting. This video, like every video in this series, is shot as a single take with no editing afterwards. So everything that I'm doing you can do in real time. And the thing I wanted to talk to all of you about was how to take more control over the way that you're using slides and media in your online presentations. And you've got two choices in order to do this. You can use the inbuilt system within the piece of software that your meeting is on. Um, Zoom is quite good for this. I don't know how good Teams is. But personally, I don't like to do this, partly because those systems change all the time and I need to relearn them. And partly because often I'll have a meeting that's in a new piece of software I've never used before. It'll be a Google Hangout or somebody will say, we've got this proprietary system that allows us to and then I no longer have the control that I'm used to having over the slides so what I like to do is control everything at my end and I do this with a free piece of software called OBS uh, there's an online piece of software called StreamYard which does a lot of the same things but I don't know it as well but just to give you an idea if I'm in a Zoom meeting or if I'm in a Teams meeting, I don't need to share my screen. I just need to talk so that I become the big screen that's mainly on the face. And then I can do everything from my computer. So I can, for instance, uh, put up titles and text. You saw me do that at the beginning of the speech. Um, I can put up photos. There's a nice little photo of me. Uh, I can play videos. Hello, Steve. Recording a video, are you? Nice. Very nice. Uh, I can, of course, um, put up slides. Uh, if I'm being really, really clever, uh, I can use the screen behind me to appear in front of my slides. This is quite nice if you've forgotten to put little indicators on all of your slides to tell people what they're supposed to be looking at. You can pop up and point at the bullet point that you want. I can change microphones um, just to show you. That's probably not why you would change microphones. You'd change microphones because you had two or three other people that you're talking to that you want to make sure are heard properly. Just going back to slides for a second, I just wanted to note something about online sharing. So online sharing, because people are watching on a big variety of screens, you have to take a lot more care to make sure that your slides are designed for people to look at. So when you're in a room, you're all looking at the same thing and you know if your slide is too busy and you'll find presenters saying, oh, I've just realised you can't pick anything out on that slide. Um, you can't tell that online because you might be looking on a great big 27 inch monitor, but the person watching might be on their phone. Also, it's likely that your signal is being squished. So uh, it's coming through at a much lower resolution than it is on your screen. And often people have quite choppy video feeds because their broadband isn't the fastest. So just to give you an idea, this looks absolutely great on my screen, uh, completely readable every single thing. It probably did not look readable on your screen. So the absolutely basic rules of slide design of keep things very simple, indicate to the viewer the pieces that they need to see and don't bury it in lots of other information on the screen. Those become much more important when you're doing this sort of thing through Zoom. Um, so that's how I can take control of everything at my end. I can show you anything I want to show you just through the normal feed. And I'm doing this through a thing called the OBS virtual camera. So Zoom, instead of using the camera on my computer, is using this virtual camera that OBS is sending it. And I can put anything into that virtual camera. One problem can be sound. Um, quite often uh, you have to then find a different way of sending sound to Zoom, especially if you want to flick between different microphones and things like that. I like to use a piece of software called Loopback because I use a Mac and Loopback allows me to select every program that I want the sound from and feed them into a single virtual source. And then that virtual source is picked up in Zoom the same way. Um, I'd strongly urge you, there are, Loopback's quite expensive. There are free versions. There used to be a thing called Soundflower. There's lots of Windows software that does the same thing for free. And again, that gives me total control at this end. If I want to play you a video, but I want to talk over it, I can fade the video up and down when I'm talking. Um, and you can't do that as easily within a piece of software like Zoom. 
Um, so the other thing that I'm using to speed all of this up uh, is a piece of hardware called Stream Deck. So every time that something changes on the screen, uh, I'm pressing a button on a physical uh, thing in front of me. Now, um, that can be quite a big commitment to buy a Stream Deck. Stream Deck is uh, they're a couple of hundred pounds. Uh, there is a piece of software you can get for a mobile phone that does the same thing called Touch Portal. So again, you could have your phone in one hand just out of shot and you're using it to trigger the images that you want. You can use it to change slides. You can use it to play videos and those sorts of things. I don't use uh, Touch Portal, but I'm told it's absolutely brilliant. The real thing I wanted to get across with all of this is that as much as the design of slides and the design of information on slides is an art that people don't take seriously enough in their presentations, making sure that you are the person who knows how the software works is an art that is not being taken seriously during online presentations. And whatever you're doing, whatever piece of software you're going to use, I urge you to try it out and learn how you're going to deliver all the things you want to deliver beforehand. Call a friend. Uh, on the same system before your meeting and try out everything that you want to do and check with your friend that it looks okay and that it's readable and that they can see you and all those sorts of things. Um, don't be the person who's fumbling their way through the software, triggering everybody else to think this person doesn't really know what they're doing, even if it's subconsciously, and then start looking at other things on their screen. The slicker and more professional you look, the easier it is to keep their attention and to get your point across. Do join me for the other videos of this series. Uh, I'd urge you to watch the whole lot and especially the first video, which tells you how all of these videos fit together. And uh, good luck with your online presentations.